Good day, mga kasambahay! Welcome to Doctors on TV. I'm your host, Dr. Sarah Barba Cabodil. Get ready to be knowledgeable again in a certain medical topic through our episode today. But before anything else, hindi po kami magsasawang mag-invite sa inyo to follow and subscribe our social media accounts. Because through it, you will be updated sa aming mga episodes. Please like and follow our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash doctors on TV. And like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just type www.youtube.com slash at TV News and Rescue. And you can actually send us questions po and mga comments sa mga pages na yan. Kaya after liking and subscribing, ishare nyo na din po sa inyong mga friends and family. Narinig nyo na po ba mga kasambahay ang chronic obstructive pulmonary disease o yung tinatawag na COPD? Ito po ay isang uri ng sakit na pangunahing apektado ay ang ating lungs o mga baga na karaniwan pong nakararanas ay ang mga mahilig pong manigarilyo. Bagay po na nakakabahala lalo na po at milyon-milyon ang namamatay dahil po sa paggamit ng tobacco. At para po sa iba pang paunang informasyon ukol sa Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease o COPD, let's watch this! In 2019, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, was responsible for causing 3.23 million deaths, making it the third most prevalent cause of death worldwide. Low- and middle-income countries, or LMC, account for almost 90% of COP deaths in individuals under the age of 70. The World Health Organization is actively working to increase the diagnosis and treatment of COP through various initiatives. Furthermore, COPD has been incorporated into the WHO Global Action Plan for the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases and the United Nations 2023 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Little did we know, million-million pong tao sa mundo ang may COPD at naku patuloy na dumadami dahil nga po sa kakulangan ng impormasyon. Kaya naman, samahan nyo kami hanggang mamaya, mga kasambahay, upang atin pong malaman pa ang iba't ibang bagay na nakapaloob po sa Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease o COPD. So stay tuned, mga kasambahay. Doctors on TV, we'll be right back. to be able to understand more this topic, we have a very special guest joining us today. She is an expert in her field and has helped many patients regain their quality of life through her compassionate care and expertise. We are fortunate to have Dr. Jillian Tabora Lakdao, a pulmonologist from Makati Medical Center. Good morning, Dr. Jillian. Welcome to Doctors on TV. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Salamat, Dok, dahil pinaunlakan niyo po ang aming invitation to be our guest for today. Ayan, mga kasambahay, para mas maintindihan natin lahat to, Dr. Jillian will explain it to us. So ito nga, Dok, ano nga po ba ang emphysema? Okay, so um, emphysema is the disease of the airways. No? So yung walls ng um, segment na ating lungs na tinatawag na alveoli, it becomes destructive no? because of um, certain inflammation or any triggers na pwedeng makasira dito causing the emphysema. Okay, so doc, himayin natin para mas maintindihan lang uh, ating mga manonood. So di ba alam natin ang ating daw ang lungs or baga, yan ay parang may mga blobo, ano, tapos saan doon umiikot ang oh, nagpapalitan ng mga gas ng oxygen, okay, carbon dioxide. Now, sa emphysema, ito po yung sinasabi yung nasisira itong mga air sacs. Yes, yung air sacs or if you imagine, ano, yung mga lobong maliliit na yon, pag nag nagputok siya or nasira, hindi na siya magre-regenerate kasi magpo-form na siya into one big blob. Oh, okay. So, ibig sabihin, walang magkakaroon, na, nababawasan, okay, ang, ang pati ng baga kung saan pwedeng magkaroon ng exchange itong gases. Yeah. Okay. And ano po ang sanhi ng emphysema? Well, there are different causes of emphysema. Ang pinaka number one, no, na, na cause ng emphysema ay ang cigarette smoking. Okay? Mm-hmm. Oo. Ang ibang other causes of um, emphysema could include exposure to, to triggers, no, tulad ng pollution, chemicals, no, sa so occupational hazards natin. Pwede din, um, it could also be genetic, no? Um, this is common sa abroad, yung mga patients na may alpha-1 antitrypsin deficient. Okay, so multifactorial din pala ito. We've been hearing kasi talagang 
there's high association between smoking and uh, emphysema. Okay, so marami rin palang po pwede. Okay, and usually ano po ang mga namamanifest na mga signs and symptoms na mga pasyenteng merong uh, emphysema? Ayan, marami, maraming signs and symptoms na yung emphysema. So, kung halimbawa meron kayong ubo, mm-hmm. okay, na, na chronic yung ubo, um, hindi gumagaling, meron kayong difficulty of breathing, no? hirap huminga. Or shortness of breath, halimbawa umaakit kayo ng stairs or konti exertion lang, feeling mo kapos ka ng hinga. Mm-hmm. Na parang nalulunod yung feeling na you need to catch your breath. Yun din. Minsan may, may tunog or sipol yung paghinga. That's what you call the winds. Narinig mo rin siya. Meron din fatigue. Sometimes patients get anxiety as well. Um, these are some of the signs of MPs. I see. And uh, yun na mention niyo po ng mga manifestations. Medyo meron pa ng resemblance sa hika. Okay, so... Uh, ang ating mga viewers baka nagtataka, ano kung pagkakaiba nito sa asthma? Both emphysema and asthma, they're obstructive diseases. Um, sa asthma, um, it can be um, since childhood, it can manifest no, yung asthma. Or pwede rin an adulthood, which can be triggered by several um, risk factors, no? especially if there's triggers or any allergies. Um, itong um, emphysema, usually you see it um, in the older age group, no? sa mga mas matatanda and it can be caused by yung know, na-mention natin earlier na mga risk factor. I see, okay. So basically, kailangan talagang i-extract ng uh, matindi yung uh, uh, medical history ng pasyente yes. okay, to identify it. And uh, usually po, once diagnosed of emphysema, what can make it worse? Well, what makes it worse is um, if you do not, you know, stop smoking, for example. Yeah, uh, emphysema na, but the patient still continues smoking. Or they get exposed no, to, to the irritants or chemicals at work. Pwede din na kapag uh, may mga allergies or infections, no, um, it, it can make it, ano, um, it can aggravate the, the situation. I see. And, uh, okay, so yun, at least modifiable. I mean, as well as kanina yung sinabing yung mga occupational hazards. But of course, siguro medyo parang uh, challenging sa part kung may kinalaman ng kanilang trabaho, ang kanilang hanap buhay dito sa... Uh, I mean, kung saan sila na-expose, for example, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa mga uh, mga uh, ri- rice mills o kaya yung mga traffic aids natin, hindi ko ba? So, yes. of course, uh, mahirap naman para sa kanilang bitiwan ng kanilang ganong hanap buhay kasi paano sila mag, uh, anong kanilang pamilya? Okay. Tuloy pa rin, no? Of course, hanap buhay, yeah, that's very important. But we can do safety precautions naman, no? Like wearing a mask, that's very important. Especially kung nasa trabaho ka, tas you're constantly exposed, no? So, pwede ka naman magsuot ng mask. So, basically, these are the risk factors talaga in having emphysema. Okay, so, pero pag nakita natin, medyo talaga modifiable. Well, well except for dun sa isang, sinasabi nyo na uh, pwedeng mag- makita sa isang bata pa lang. Um, Yes. Uh-oh. So, yung sa bata, usually, ga, uh, mas, mas common nga, as early mentioned, yung asthma, no? yung emphysema, mas nakikita yan pag, pag matatanda na sila. I see, and usually, ano po yung mga uh, diagnostic procedures para you can come up with a final diagnosis of emphysema? Ayan. So, before no, before we diagnose patients with emphysema, as you mentioned earlier, it's very important that we know the, the history of the patient. No? So, minsan, makukulit yung mga doktor no? kasi you keep asking, everything no even the exposure kung saan sila nakatira and then um and in work nila no kasi we, we have to know those things and then the physical examination there are certain um findings in physical examination na nakikita natin that may suggest no the baka may emphysema yung patient mm-hmm. then when we go to the um diagnostic tests no imaging we have yung mga x-ray no um of course we don't see it in the early stages of emphysema pero pag mga moderate to severe cases na yan no um may makikita na tayo mga pagbabago sa x-ray that we can compare no, to normal. Meron din CT scan. Uh, CT scan is the 3D image no, of the lungs. So, it's better no, to delineate um, everything na nakikita natin sa baga. Um, aside from that, you also do um, lab tests. no You can do arterial blood gas na tinatawag. So, yung arterial blood gas, malalaman mo kung ano yung oxygen at carbon dioxide sa, sa, sa dugo ng tao. No? So, malalaman natin kung kamusta yung level pag humihinga ka ng oxygen at pag, when you exhale, diba, yung carbon dioxide. And another is um, CBC. No? CBC is important as well. It's a very um, helpful test no? because it can tell us a lot of things no? like your hemoglobin counts, if there's any signs of infection, ano, may kita mo din yung mga WBC, segmenters. And for, sorry, uh, and for FIC, my usually, um, what, what can we and how can CBC be of use to us? Well, CBC more more of ano, it's just a helpful tool. It's not the diagnostic for emphysema, but it can just help us with um, the diagnosis and if 
ever there's any need for uh, treatment, treatment for infection. Yeah, saka siguro yeah, to rule out possi- uh, uh, possibility of presence of infection. Yes, the thorax. And um, how about yung mga lung function test procedures? Ano po yung mga available that can help uh, help you in guiding uh, or in coming up with a diagnosis of MS? Yes, we have um, several um, tests available. Ano, that's what you call the pulmonary function test. No? Uh, we have what you call the spirometry, uh-huh. the gas diffusion test, um, exercise stress test, no? um, CPET. Um, yun yung usually, uh, may mga test na they put you in a box or may pinapahigop sa inyo, no? Tapos, they check yung volume ng lang Kung ano yung kaya mong inhale, no? Sa lungs at kung ano yung kaya mong exhale. So, mga test yan, very, ano, very helpful and tools, no? To diagnose if a patient has MVC. Okay, so, kailangan lang talaga ga- gawin, mga kasambahay, ay magbisita sa inyong uh, mga pulmonologist para mas mag-guide, ano? Kasi, of course, pag hindi properly diagnosed, hindi ka rin mabibigyan maaampatan ng uh, tamang management. Yes. Okay, and ito pa, samantala muna po natin ititigil ng ating talakayan. Uh, medyo overwhelming ang mga information na ibinabahagi sa atin, ni doktora, no? Pero, kaya huwag niyo muna po inilipat ang channel. Doctors on TV, we'll be right back. sa pagpapatuloy ng ating talakayan, still here with us is Dr. Jillian Tabora Lakdao, a pulmonologist from Makati Medical Center. Okay, ito na doktora, kanina marami na tayo natalakay. Ito po, um, usually, paano ba kaya i-prevent ang emphysema? Para maiwasan, syempre, alam natin, di pa sabi nyo, ang ah, hirap, hirap ah, uminga. Tapos, ah, yun yung may exertion sa paghinga, lalo na kapag ka, ah, konting galaw lang. Depende po sa, ano eh, severity, okay, ng emphysema. And then, ah, iba pang mga discomfort. So, So, parang ang pinaka dapat gawin dito, talaga i-prevent mo nalang na magkaroon ka ng emphysema. And uh, usually, paano, ano yung mga measures na pwede natin i-share sa ating viewer? Tama ka, Dok Sara, no? So, prevention is better than intervention, no? So, kung maaari, kung kaya mo naman na i-prevent siya, no? From happening, yung emphysema, then all the more, better, no? Yeah. So, um, of course, number one um, is to, to, if you're a smoker, no? Stop smoking. Or if, if ano, you plan to smoke, then don't smoke na lang, no? Or, of course, second-hand smoking, magkakaroon ka rin ng exposure to doon. At saka sa mga um, irritants, no? sa mga pwedeng pollution, dust, na pwedeng baka irritate na ng lungs. It, uh, uh, ex- avoid these exposures. I see. And ito pong mga uh, FIC mga patients po, are they like, ano, uh, more prone to uh, uh, having pulmonary infection? Yes, yes. They are prone to um, pulmonary infections because it's a chronic um, lung, lung disease, so... Uh, they can get infection. Okay, and uh, ito, Doktora, you also mentioned ka while ago na ang um, kalimitan, uh, mas na, mas uh, pagka medyo pa-severe, mas, mas nakikita dun sa mga diagnostic procedures. Ganun din po ba ang ano, ang, uh, sa mga symptoms? I mean, uh, initially, parang uh, hindi pa ini-entertain yung FIC mo unless it's severe already. Yes, there are some patients, no, na they just um, have occasional cough na, ah, ha- ganun, that okay, mm-hmm. no, they still go about with life. Okay, yung, yung activities nila. But later on, no, they'll notice na minsan habang naglalakad sila, parang ay, wait lang, parang kinakapos ako ng hinga. O kaya, uh, minsan nanonood ka lang ng TV, no? Para nafe-feel mo, nagkakaroon ka lang ng difficulty breathing. O kaya, upo ka ng upo na hindi gumagaling, no? Na, 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 so, isipol na yung hinga mo. So, um, usually you get patients, no, na it's not always in the later stage. Minsan, I don't know, when they have the symptoms already, na nararamdaman. There are some naman who, who come early stage pa lang, no, na parang they just want to be checked, no. Na nagpapacheck up na agad sila, maaga pa lang. So, iba-iba eh yung nakikita natin. So, magkakaiba yung presentation. Tsaka depende kung anong stage. Ito, doktora, kasi di ba na-mention nyo rin kanina na parang, ah, uh, merong uh, of, of higher risk of having pulmonary infections yung mga may emphysema, okay? So, ano yung mga pwede natin idagdag ng mga preventive measures para sa mga ganitong infections? Okay, so preventive measures, no, uh, of course, you have to take care of yourself. Kasi sabi ko, no, take your maintenance medications. If you feel that you're starting to have symptoms, no, consult your doctor. Um, another thing is to get vaccinated, no. Um, y- you have mga pneumonia vaccine and influenza vaccine that's available, no. And of course, the COVID vaccine, it's available as well. Um, of course, always wash your hands, no? Yung, yung lagi natin sinasabi, uh, wash your hands if you're in a crowded area, no? And social distancing, especially kung mayroong mga pasyente or may mga, may mga tao na nakikita mo ubo-ubo o sinisipon. 
Tapos yun, um, the bre- deep breathing exercises and just just take care of yourself. Ayan mga kasambahay ha, paulit-ulit yung reiterate. Yes, prevention is better than intervention. Okay, and how do we go about the management of emphysema? Well, there are several managements no, for, for emphysema. Of course, there's the medical management. No? Um, number one, you can give um, a medication that's called uh, a bronchodilator. No? So, this can be given via pausok, no, nebulization, or yung mga inhaler gadgets na ginagamit natin. So, yung purpose nun is to relax your airways, no? Para hindi mo nafe-feel yung nagko-constrict yung, yung paghinga mo na nahirap. So, that's one, no? Bronchodilator. Uh, another thing is um, the corticosteroids, so inhaled corticosteroids. So, it will reduce the inflammation in the lungs, no? Kasi... Ang, ang isa sa mga reasons no, kung bakit hirap din sa emphysema is, is because of this. And uh, when you give these medications, it will improve the quality of life also of patients and, and their function every day. And um, the third one uh, is uh, they're going to ask about antibiotics. No? You don't give antibiotics right away for emphysema. It will re- really depend on how the, the doctor will assess you and um, if there's any signs of any infection, then that's when you, you give antibiotics. I see. So how about, uh, apart from these medications, meron bang, uh, do, we, do we subject yung mga emphysema patients to certain therapies? Um, we can do um, pulmonary rehab. No, We usually refer patients for pulmonary rehab because this is very helpful. No? It's an educational program where they teach you no, the breathing techniques, how to exercise your lungs, no? Um, it's a social um, support group also, no? Na they will teach you how to improve your um, your breathing function, how you can go about with your daily activities, no? And in the quality of life. I see. And uh, meron pa tayong mga pwedeng ma-recommend like well, with regards to lifestyle, like the nutrition or like exercise and the like. Yes, lifestyle modification. That's also very important. So, you know, every day we can do this, the deep breathing exercises, you know, eat properly, no, yung tamang pangkain. Um, get enough sleep, hydrate, no, um, exercise. You can do exercises naman with your family and loved ones. In, yun, just just uh, have a good lifestyle. Okay, and uh, ito, doctor, I'm just uh, curious, no, how about yung mga, meron kayo, uh, yung most severe case of emphysema that you have dealt with. Um, meron, ano, I mean, makakatulong ba yung mga nauna na management or if hindi yun magsusuffice I mean, meron pa bang ibang treatment options for them? Well, those um, options that we mentioned earlier now that's very, very helpful for patients especially with um, severe emphysema but if it's um, not working ano, um, of course, um, there's a surgical um, option also no? so there's two you call the lung reductive um, lung, re- lung volume reduction surgery and the lung transplant no? Unfortunately, the transplant is not yet available in our country. You can do it abroad, but um, some hospitals, no, the, the the council also, the Society of Polo, they're trying to put up uh, a program. No, hopefully in the future we can have the the lung transplant. Yeah, oo nga para to give hope para dun sa mga uh, severe cases of emphysema. And uh, you know, how about the life expectancy of emphysema patients? Well, it depends, no. Um, it it depends, no. We can't give um the the strict numbers, no. Kung ano talaga yung life expectancy, because you have to consider also other factors like the age of the patient. Mm-hmm. Then they have comorbidities, no. Yung mga may sakit po, alibaba, may high blood, may diabetes, may may um sakit sa heart, no, and other cancer, no. So it, it's not a life sentence, no. If you have um emphysema, kung bakit it's very important that you always coordinate, no. Check up with your doctor. Um, take care of yourself, no? Siyempre, self-care is very important. And, and um, how about, would you, ano, would you advise, um, like, having uh, an oxygen tank, okay, in the household kapag uh, merong emphysema? Kasi, di ba na, lalo na nitong panahon nitong uh, COVID, di ba? Parang, uh, alam natin, nagkaroon ng uh, shortage, ganyan, so sa mga tanks. And, uh, sa emphysema ba, would you advise having this? Uh, in the in the in the house, yeah, you know when, when I have patients, no, especially uh, when they go to the clinics, no, it's very important, no, you. I can't stress enough the importance of patient education, because number one, they have to understand what is emphysema, what am I going through, no, so that they could understand. Another thing is uh, what are the warning signs and symptoms. Um, aside from this, yung question mo, no, um, usually they have a pulse oximeter. It's very accessible, easy to get, na, no. Um, the pulse oximeter, which tells you the heart rate of the patient and the oxygen saturation, because we have targets there. And the supplemental oxygen, some may use it at home, some uh, they use it natuloy-tuloy. 
yung iba as needed. So, um, for their comfort also at home and um, for their peace of mind, it would be better no, to have uh, just a portable oxygen there just yeah. in case they, they need it. At oh. least uh, in case of emergency, habang itatra, bago nila daling sa ospital, di ba? Yes. At paano parang baka mag-stabilize din ang ano. That, okay, so there you have it, Dr. Ana. Thank you very much sa mga shinare nyo na information. No? Really overwhelming. And uh, at this time, baka meron kayo mga final words para sa ating mga viewers. So, thank you, Dr. Sarah. No? Uh, thank you everyone also for listening. So, ang MPC mapor no, this is not contagious. So, it's very important na alagaan natin yung ating mga sarili. So, sabi ko nga earlier, prevention is better than intervention. But if meron na nga pong sakit na ganun, ang importante po, alagaan ang sarili. Um, consult your doctor po, no? If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask questions to your doctors. Kasi mas may intindihan po natin um, if we work as a team. Kasi po, um, ang matasakit po kagaya ng emphysema, it's not just the doctor, no? Uh, it's also the patient and the family. Yes. Napaka-importante rin po ng, ng, ng family support no? sa, sa mga patients natin. Um, lifestyle modification and take your medicines, no? the maintenance medications. Um, you know, if, if, you, you, um, if, you're, if you're compliant with your medications no? and you do um, what's prescribed, you can still, you know, go about with your daily activities. Oh, very well said, Dr. Julia. Thank you very much. And you might want to invite our viewers to visit you here at Makati Medical Center. Yes. Um, if you have any questions, you have any concerns, if you want to ask me uh, for anything uh, related to internal medicine for pulmo, don't hesitate to to see me in Makati Medical Center. Okay, thank you once again, Dr. Julia Tabora Lakdao, a pulmonologist from Makati Medical Center. Thank you. Naku, we hope no, tapos ang mahay marami po kaming naitulong sa inyo para matagdagan ng ating kaalaman tungkol po sa MFIC, ma. We all know that air pollution, smoking, and other environmental factors, our lungs can become compromised and affect our health. But how can we protect ourselves from that situation? To know more about this, let's watch this. This morning, ating pag-uusapan ang mga paraan to keep us safe from air pollution. Lalo na kung tayo ay nakatira sa syudad, kung saan naghanap ang may itim na usok na ibinubuga ng mga sasakyan. Bukod pa ang iba't ibang chemicals na maaaring magdulot sa atin ng mga sakit sa baga, gaya ng empysema. So let's start now. Bukod sa pananggalang sa virus, malaking bagay rin ang pagsusuot ng face mask dahil hindi pa humuhupa ang bangis ng COVID-19 na sumisira sa ating baga. Sa katunayan, marami pa ang nahahawa at nao-ospital, lalo na ang mga walang bakuna. Oo nga at hindi pa gaanong mataas ang kaso ng COVID, pero narito pa rin at paikot-ikot ang virus. Kaya ugaliin po natin magsuot ng face mask lalo na sa mataong lugar. Dahil makakatulong ito na makaiwas tayo makalanghap ng usok galing sa sasakyan at paninigarilyo ng iba. Dahil alam nyo ba mga kasambahay na ang empysema ay isang uri ng chronic obstructive pulmonary disease o COPD. Ito ay sakit na nakukuha sa palaging paninigarilyo. Mahalaga din mapalakas natin ang ating immune system. Ang pagkain ng mga mayaman sa fiber tulad ng broccoli, cauliflower, fresh fruits, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin C at vitamin E ay magpapalakas ng ating katawan. Makakatulong din mapalakas ang ating immune system ang palaging pag exercise ang paglanghap na sariwang hangin at ang kahit simpleng paglalakad. Pagpapaaraw ay importante dahil pinapalakas nito ang ating katawan, lalo na ang ating mga puso at ating baga, mga kasambahay. Umiwas na rin tayo sa paninigarilyo. Tandaan din po natin kapag tayo ay nakakalanghap ng second hand smoke, para na din po tayong naninigarilyo at pwede po tayong magkaroon ng empysema o sakit sa baga. Yan po ang ating mga simple tips para makaiwas sa air pollution. Sana ay marami kayong natutunan sa ating discussion ngayong umaga. See you again next week for more natural tips. Muli, ako si Jason Sanchez, your integrative medicine doctor. See you again next week because natural is beautiful, only here at Naturally Yours. Goodbye, I would like to greet Iyo and Ia. Hi, Ki EJ, Ki Dokalane, and of course, Nana and Tatay, I love and miss you both. 
as we wrap up today's episode, naku sana ay marami po kayong natutulan mga kasambahay. Just a reminder, early detection and treatment can make a significant difference in managing the condition and improving quality of life. At sana po ay matutunan din nating alaga ng ating mga sarili. Iwasan po ang dapat iwasan para tayo po ay laging healthy. And also, remember to follow us on social media for more updates. Don't forget to tune in next time, God willing. Muli po, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Ito po si Dr. Sarah Barba Cabodil. Let's make it a habit to learn about good health. Only here at Doctors on TV. We would like to thank Makati Medical Center, a hospital with a heart, located at Amarsola Street, Legazpi Village, Makati City. You may contact them at 632-8888-8999. Like and follow their Facebook page at I am Makati Med, or you can visit their website at www.makatimed.net.ph. Makati Med Wellness Center, located at 7th floor Ayala North Exchange Tower 1, Legazpi Village, Makati City. Mestiza soaps. Mestiza soaps are made with natural ingredients and a combination of vegetable and fruit extracts, which can be also used by children and pregnant women. Good news is that these beauty products are vegan and cruelty-free. For increase in orders, contact 0969-175-423133 or 02-8824-5217 or 02 881-30320 Organic Acai Support your health with a 100% organic superfood supplement, organic acai premium blend, and acai freeze-dried capsules. Rich in powerful antioxidants, fiber, amino acids, vitamin C, omega fats, and other essential nutrients the body needs to help build stronger immunity against illnesses and help increase your energy. Organic Acai is available in all Mercury Drug Stores and other leading drug stores and supermarkets nationwide. Linden Gas Corporation, located at 179 National Road Landayan San Pedro Laguna 4023. For inquiries, you may contact them at 02-8824-0867 or 02-824-0867. Or you can email them at lgcsalesco at gmail.com. And of course, salamat sa ating partner, ang DepEd Santa Rosa, sa pakikiisa sa ating atikain na maibahagi ang kaalamang pangkalusugan. Clinica Figura You may contact them at 0917-317-7272. Medical Depot Healthy Nom Nom Food Barba Cabodil Holistic Health Group, located at Unit 1531, Centuria Medical Makati, Century City, Makati. You may contact 0917-317-7272 for appointments and other inquiries about your health and wellness needs. Please like and follow Facebook page, Dr. Sarah Barba Cabodil. Special thanks to Dr. Gia Grace B. Sison, Head of Makati Med Wellness Center. Attorney Pilar Nenuga P. Almira, President and CEO, Dr. Saturnino P. Javier, Medical Director, Ms. Arlene El Sonco, Senior Vice President, Ms. Monica Reyes Dizon, Assistant Vice President, Mr. Mark Funelas, Unit Head Manager, Communications and Special Projects. <music>